Go straight to South Africa, where my brother Toto is standing by. Five countries in Africa are scheduled to shut down the countries on a Monday. That's tomorrow in a coordinated regional protest. As we go live to South Africa, where my brother Toto is standing by. My brother, greetings to you. Thank you so much for joining us in the Africa Forum this morning live from South Africa. How are you doing? Uh, greetings, Kabu, Mahat, Karu, and the listeners of RFM. Thank you uh, so much. Well yes, for the moment. good to know you're doing well in South Africa. My brother, what a time we're in, what a time we're in. This looks like a time of foment. Am I right? Or am- in the time of? Foment. It looks, it looks to me as if. Foment. Yes, or foment. Yeah. yeah. Well, um. In South Africa, I guess, in the rest of the African continent, we are just existing in a space that can be termed to be a stable crisis. Ah, oh. <laughs> so, I get the point you're whatever. making. Yes. All right, let's, yeah, start, let's so start with South Africa first. Be- okay. Yeah, let's start with South Africa first, because we know that five African countries are scheduled to shut down. They say they're going to shut down their countries tomorrow. Yes. And so yes. we have South Africa, Kenya, Tunisia, Nigeria, and Senegal. Um, was this coordinated? or Because it seems as if South Africa um, was out of the blocks first. Um, am, am I right? Who, who started this? And wh- where did all of this start? Well, South Africa started first uh, with Julius Malima and the Economic Freedom Fighters. Must remember that Julius Malema is currently the most influential African revolutionary. Mm-hmm. So it is very uh, common that therefore maybe the others then to get tuned from him. Yes, yes. Considering that uh, Julius is uh, has taught most South Africans uh, to rise up for their rights mm-hmm. when the ANC government tried to fool the people to post Mandela and everything but Julius took it even step further it's like a combination of Steve Bigo Robert Sobukwe is he is the unfinished revolution oh so yes that went into different African countries his organizations got branches all over I think in other 14 African countries in Namibia you have the economic freedom fighters uh, everywhere around so I just assume or or think that he, he, he started first, of course. Mm-hmm. But we haven't had anyone uh, mentioning the shutdown uh, before him, and then everyone else took it in that way as the best way of uh, dealing with the, the problems that we are facing in Africa is just to shut down these countries. Yes, and I think, I think that uh, because of the traction... Because we have these other five other African countries, and I really do hope not just continental Africa, but that other countries in continental Africa and also the African diaspora pay some attention tomorrow to, to what's happening in South Africa, in Kenya, in Tunisia, Nigeria, and Senegal. Because um, what's the reason for the general reason, would you say? Because South Africa would have set that standard um, for the protest, the uh, national lockdown, first of all, in South Africa, and then for those others who are joining? Uh, what com- common about all of them is shutdown. They're going to everything to stand still. They're going to make their government ungovernable for a day or going forward. Mm-hmm. Some will suspect that it might be the beginning of a revolution. It might not be uh, mm-hmm. a one-day thing. Mm-hmm. And then um, but in South Africa, in this case, we have a problem of electricity blackout. Yeah. Uh, they call it um, um, load shedding. Mm-hmm. We call it load shedding. Mm-hmm. And then there is also a problem of water. So yeah. we've been having water and electricity crisis, mm-hmm. while South Africa is taking out a lot of coal, sending it to America and Europe and America and Europe telling us to stop generating electricity through coal. Mm-hmm. Yet they are the ones who are taking our coal that are coming up with their pseudo-politics of climate change and so forth. Yes. But also the 
the third factor in South Africa is we generally have a problem with the president. Mm-hmm. He is a typical servant of white monopoly capital. Mm-hmm. Um, he's being generally a disaster. So South Africa under him is just a state of disaster. And so, that, and so, and there is a call for his resignation, isn't there? Yes, there is. There is common resonation because okay, I know in Tunisia it's got, it's got to do with the racial profiling of the Africans mm-hmm. and xenophobia that is on the rise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that in Kenya, the president, uh, the the, uh, the the honourable Raila Odinga, mm-hmm. has been having a problem with the current ruling party or the. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so generally, it's a problem of a state failure, right. failure in government, uh, grand corruption, mm-hmm. and so forth. So, it's, so, it's basically bad governance, right? Uh, so, affecting it, African people in different ways. You know, in our case, yes, it's a bad president, uh, electricity crisis, a mm-hmm. country that is generating so much electricity and selling to other countries, but it can't. Pro- provide and produce enough electricity for his people, mm-hmm. and we also know that it's an agenda of privatization because the president and his brother-in-law and another brother-in-law, uh, they are one of the few owners of what they call the IPP, the Independent Power Producing Utilities. So, the one take out the state-owned mm-hmm. uh, entity of electricity we call ESCOM. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, uh, companies. Yes. So the typical, uh, the typical textbook system, you know, problem, reaction, solution. Mm-hmm. You know what they've been doing Europeans throughout. You know, they create a crisis, and then they provide their own type of solution. Yes. So in this case, it's a crisis of electricity, so that they come up with their private company. Solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, it's part of the yeah, neo. It's okay. part of a neoliberal project that um, that is sweeping across continental Africa and the African diaspora. We see it um, unfolding also in the of Europe where we see the collapse of, of the banks, which uh, many are saying, well, those who are looking deep, 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 are saying that this is deliberate um, for the reset. So that generally across the continent of Africa. Um, we, we people uh, are going to be expressing their dissatisfaction tomorrow, their dissatisfaction with the various governments in dealing with the economic and the political problems. And we see that underlying all of this. But in South Africa and in the other countries too, we have um, the president responded and Cyril Ramaphosa has responded with militancy. Um, tell us what's, what's, what's his response. Um. You know, um, he he's threatening. Uh, he's deploying soldiers and the police. Mm. Uh, and, and you that's my, my call for a peaceful protest. And this, his minister of the police also came out telling us about the deployment, how they will deal with everything decisively. So while we have a higher crime rate that his police can't deal with the crime. Mm-hmm. We have a heist being committed almost every day. There's a bank robbery or cash in transit heist taking place. We have a whole lot of policing crisis that his minister of police can't manage. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, even the president and the minister and the minister of justice, Ronald Lamola, also came out. They've been just having rolling press conferences. They're panicking. But not mm-hmm. only that, even the the, the white um, opposition uh, party, mm-hmm. the Democratic Alliance, uh, both nationally and in uh, in their province, they have run to the court to interdict uh, this protest, this shutdown. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of their white uh, neo-fascist and liberals and and racist organizations they are trying to stop this. While the black organization, the Economic Freedom Fighters, the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania, the Azanian People's Organization, the African, all these black organizations, they are joining the protest, the shutdown. And I understand which, that, the, the, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I understand that the, the, the unions, the trade unions, 
have also joined the protest. Yes, the trade union have also indicated they will be joining the protest. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The trade union, the political parties, the the small opposition parties in in parliament, the civil society, even some of the Rastafari Mm -hmm. organizations, they've indicated they will be joining the shutdown Mm -hmm. because it's a societal problem, it's not a political problem. It Mm -hmm. affects the entire society, those who are involved in politics and those who are not involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Is poor governance. Is is a grand corruption. I mean, the president the other day they found he stashed about uh, four million dollars under his couch or his bed. Yes, and which we discussed. Yeah. Stolen. Yes, you know there's still a big scandal, and then they are using their majority in parliament mm-hmm. to stifle investigation, to stifle debate. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a finding by parliamentary uh, section eighty nine. A parliamentary committee that went and find that there is a prima facie case that the president has to answer mm-hmm. and then they use their parliamentary majority to throw away the whole thing so he mm-hmm. still have power remember this is a president who bought his presidency you know mm-hmm. and that is why president jacob zuma was taking so much issues with him uh, during the december ANC conference Yes. and running towards the December, even after that. There's an audit, you know, no leader of the ANC because ever bought his position, he spent about one billion. So yes. you have the Oppenheimers, the Rupert, and uh, the, 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 the DPRs of this country sponsoring him. But mind you, this one is a person who got hand-picked by them mm-hmm. from an early age. So he's serving a greater agenda. Even the last apartheid president, Dick was very much in favor of him that as long as Cyril Ramaphosa is in charge, everything will go according to their plan. It seemed to me so, as if there is unity on the ground for the protest. Africa, there's this ground swell. You're listening to the Africa Forum. It is 6.30 on IUFM. And we're speaking with um, Tao Tao, my brother, who's in South Africa, um, watching what is unfolding as not just South Africa, but South Africa actually leading this. But five African countries scheduled to lock down the, the five countries, South Africa, Kenya, Tunisia, Nigeria, Senegal, tomorrow in protest against their government's economic and uh, political, um, uh, the, the issues there uh, and the challenges that they are facing in South Africa. Of course, you've heard about the problem with electricity and, and the country has been um, in, in this load shedding mode for months and months and months and months. It was always going to escalate. My brother, um, Tao Tao, but uh, it seems to me though, and I, I, I want to stop for a minute to talk about it because it seems to me as if Ramaphosa has already given directive to the police on the ground, to the army on the ground to, to quash this protest. Is there any kind of fear, any kind of pushback or people are going out understanding the fear, um, but still knowing that, you know, th- there is something greater than, than, than the fear they're feeling? Well, South, Af- South Africans have never been intimidated by the security forces or the police or the soldiers. We fought through apartheid with a mighty apartheid machinery. This is just the legal poor army and police. Um, and the Julius Malema doesn't back down. The economic freedom fighters. African is Congress of Tanzania and all the people who are determined to protest. So there is no breaking down. So it's a standoff that we will be engaging in tomorrow. And uh, you can't stop the will of the people. The people are fed up. Um, mm-hmm. And then they've been taken for a ride for a long time. So they will bring their own army unless they want to cause chaos. Yes. So it should be a very calculated response because why would you want to bring the army of the police uh, when people are having a peaceful protest. Yes. Peaceful protest. <laughs> I can tell you about that. I was just in a peaceful protest at Blue Lagoon here in Jamaica where the police was called out with high-powered weapons against women and children. Um, it, it was. I, a, I, saw you, I saw your video. Actually, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you and ask what is going on. I am t- it's a part eight. It's apartheid um, here in Jamaica. It's beach apartheid. I'm telling you. Um, so, so, so yes, we are we are, we are facing the guns here too uh, um, in peaceful protests. But there is something greater than intimidation that we're feeling, and that is we understand that there is a shift, and we have to be part of this, my brother. We are in solidarity, 
I speak on behalf of the Africa Forum family. I speak for myself also. We are in solidarity with the people of South Africa, with Joseph Malema, and with those in Kenya, in, in, in Nigeria, in Tunisia, and Senegal, who are going to lock down the countries tomorrow to show to the African leaders, continental African leaders, that we are dissatisfied and we're calling for change and step aside too if you need to step aside. I wish that some of us would do that here in Jamaica tomorrow, but you never know. Thank you so much, Toto. I will keep in see how and hear how this unfolds tomorrow. All right. No, thank you so much, Kabu, and uh, the listeners of RAFM and greet the families in Jamaica. It's revolution time. Jamaica will rise and should rise also. Unplanned revolution is going to give us solution. My yeah, brother, time for the revolution. Time for the revolution. It's time for the uniting. Mm-hmm. They expected us to unite around the dollar, but we're uniting in another way. First comes the revolution. First comes thought, and then out of thought, words, and from words, action. So Mr. Malema's EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters, is mobilizing a national protest for tomorrow, March 20, embarking on a shutdown to push for the resignation of President Cyril Ramaphosa to demand improvement in South Africa's energy crisis. As we said before, President Cyril Ramaphosa is militant. He has not taken this lightly. He has ordered law enforcement to deal decisively with any lawlessness, according to him, during the shutdown. The world is watching, though. The world is watching. President Ramaphosa said that any rebelliousness or anarchy must be nipped in the bud. This is what he has said to the law enforcement there. He talks about the rule of law and the rights to protest. He said the rights to protest is not absolute. This is an apartheid. (laughs) This is a post-apartheid South Africa. Apartheid is in Jamaica and in South Africa. We're either going to celebrate apartheid or we're going to break the back of that apartheid. In Tunisia, we are expecting similar circumstances. In Tunisia, the people say the cost of living, insecurity and impunity have angered the people. So the public, led by the National Salvation Front, are organizing. They aim to meet and protest outside the municipal theater tomorrow in Tunis. And they say every afternoon, starting tomorrow, they will meet there until there's change. They also are protesting against racism. The president of Tunisia recently came out and said that there were too many black Africans in Tunisia. Don't know if you heard that. So the Tunisians of the National Salvation Fund say they are going to be forcing a response from President Saeed. They accused him of worsening well-being of the people and of voter malpractice. This is happening tomorrow as Tunisians aim to lock down the country, as we will see happening in South Africa. In Senegal, the supporters of Senegal opposition's leader are protesting in the capital, Dakar, tomorrow in support of the aspiring presidential candidate who is now being dragged before the courts on libel charges. We have the president of Kenya, President Maki Sall, who is running for a third term. The people say, not now, ever. Hold your horses. And so they aim to shut down Dakar tomorrow. In Nigeria, the Nigerians say they are protesting against fuel shortages and swap and currency swapping difficulties. And we see Kenya, of course, in Kenya, the protest to resist the high cost of living which is blamed on government's lethargy. The Kenyans say that they're going to be locking down the country tomorrow. We are paying attention to that. They're calling this the mother of all protests in Kenya tomorrow. Raila Odinga says this will be the mother of all protests. It is expected to bring Kenya to a standstill tomorrow. This is what's happening on the continent of Africa tomorrow, March 20. This is spreading like wildfire among the the Africans uh, who are dissatisfied and are tired and fed up and tired and fed up of being tired and fed up. Jamaica is seeing beach apartheid. Beach apartheid on this island. 
We're very, very aware of it. The apartheid, apartheid system is alive and well on the island of Jamaica. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what happened at court yesterday, um, last week. Uh, you remember that the uh, stakeholders for the Little Duns River went to, for Mami Bay Beach, went to court um, last week. And we're going to talk about that in a little while. But let me just quickly uh, talk about something that's happening um, between the UK and uh, uh, Rwanda, we told you when Paul Kagame was invited to Jamaica, when he actually came into Jamaica, you know, that if you want an example of how Africans might have collaborated with the enslavers um, during the time of slavery, you had to look no further than Paul Kagame. Um, he is the em- very embodiment of every African who collaborated with the enslavers to sell Africans into slavery. It is what it is, and I said what I said, and my name is Kabuma at Kiru. Now, one of the most egregious acts of neocolonialism, and then let me put that in context, because you see, whenever there's a war, a massive genocide, whenever there is anything as negative and as egregious as as um as slavery was then for that to be successful they're always collaborators as they were collaborators in the holocaust right the jews don't spend a lot of time talking about it but they know very well who the collaborators were and we are still experiencing collaborators paul kagami is a collaborator of in, in enslavement so we see now that the uh, an act of neocolonialism, of, uh, of, of, of racism, discrimination. We see that unfolding right before our eyes in, in, with the UK, um, that, that deportation agreement between the UK and Rwanda last year. Now we see the UK's interior minister, Suela um, Braverman. We have to watch. There's an interesting thing, you know, because I talk about BAME in, in the UK. It's Mother's Day in the UK. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mothering Sunday to you if you're in the UK or if you're UK on the island. But here's the thing. We have to watch those... You know, you know, um, <laughs> let me hold back that little. But Suela Braverman has gone to... Rwanda, she's now up and down in Rwanda meeting with Paul Kagame today because they have agreed that they have sold. They have sold. UK is engaged in human trafficking. They have sold um, people who they're calling migrants and boat people uh, and, and are deporting them to, to Rwanda. And the cost is 146 million pounds. This is not a simple matter. We should not really remain silent on that. I think we should have some more conversation about it later on. But it is what it is that we see the UK talking about these migrants and these boat people that are not going to be allowed into the UK. A lot of them are coming through the French Channel, you know, English Channel, you know how they're coming um, for, through Morocco and going through the channels, but they're coming from West Africa and Sudan and so on. So a lot of these people are African people who are now being deported to Rwanda, trafficked to Rwanda. This is human trafficking at the highest, trafficked to Rwanda by the UK. This is a plan. And Suela Braverman now is just taking up what her predecessor left, and Richard Sunak is... Um, Totally in agreement with that. So we have to pay some serious attention to, what, to what's happening in the United Kingdom in this human trafficking case. And to also let our voices uh, be heard uh, in this matter. We'll spend some other time talking about it 